I used AI to analyze the top 100 Shopify stores in every sales bracket. And I'm gonna be showing you all of the learnings that I compiled from this data, so that way you can learn exactly how you can improve your overall site revenue. And the ways that I compiled this data is I went about purchasing a list of all of the data points around 2.2 million Shopify stores out there, so that way you don't have to. I then took the top 100 stores from every sales bracket and I bracketed them into zero to 50K, 50 to 100, all the way up to $5 million plus per month. And then what I did is I had ChatGBT analyze all of these data sets and compile all of the information, removing the anomalies, calculating the exact correlations into what exactly brand owners and businesses are doing to drive up their sales and what tools and ways that they do that. And then I spent the next eight hours going through ChatGBT, finding out all of the information around this data set. And one of the first things I analyzed was the average product price versus the monthly sales. And what I found was pretty shocking. As you can see here from the zero to 50K monthly revenue mark, all the way up to the $5 million per month, we see that the average product price is actually increasing as the sales brackets go up. So what this likely means is, is a lot of the brands that are able to do high figure sales months are offering products at a premium. They're higher priced. They have more products that people are able to buy that are much higher. And that doesn't go without saying that a lot of these brands still have lower priced items. As you can see here, some of them are selling items as low as $5 on their website, as low as $20, as low as $30 on their website. And their averages are around 30 to 50, but the average price of the product when you look across all of their SKUs is much higher as we go up. So this tends to mean that a lot of smaller brands are probably offering fewer products and the bigger brands have a lot more products, more premium products. They probably invested in their own brand and design and are now charging more. And so some of the things that we can learn from this is, one, you should probably consider raising pricing to improve your margins, offering more premium products or a wider range of higher priced items. And number two is businesses that reach the 100K plus sales range are more successful in implementing upselling strategies, offering products with higher price points that appeal to a more affluent customer base. We know that's true because if we look at some of these data points and go reference some of the websites. For instance, this website was on one of the lists that were doing 50K a month. And as we can see here, if we click on one of their products and we add it to cart, there is no upsell being shown. So we know that some of these smaller brands haven't yet discovered or implemented some of the strategies that allow them to drive up the revenue. Just by offering upsells, some of these bigger brands are able to get people to spend more on their website. Their average price per product is much higher and they're finding ways to be able to get people to buy more and get them on other higher tiered items. And then if we go to a different brand that's doing 500K plus monthly in sales and we add an item to cart, as you can see, we immediately have upsells showing us additional products that we can add to cart. So this is one of the strategies that these brands are leveraging to increase their overall sales. And then the next thing we analyzed was the average number of product images per product versus the monthly sales. And this is pretty interesting because as you can see here, the number of product images are highly correlated with their overall sales revenue. And the reason because of this is brands that tend to have fewer images per product, it's harder for people to check out because there's less information. Whereas brands that are doing $5 million plus per month on average have eight images per product. This means they're showing the features, the benefits, the demonstration, how you can use the product, what it looks like, different fabrics and material, ways that you can actually understand exactly what they're selling. There's more visuals. This also likely explains that as people grow in revenue, they probably tend to invest more into creative, thus being able to add more images to their website. So they're investing more in ads, they're finding out what's working, adding it to the website, adding more visuals because they have more team members working on this. And some of the key points here are, you wanna add more product images. This is a direct correlation. And the more images you show, the higher the conversion rate you will receive and the more sales you will get. And this is definitely an indicator that as businesses make more money, they tend to invest in more creative content, which is leading to more visuals being displayed across their website and ads. And so if we just look at some of these websites, for instance, this brand doing 50K a month only has one product image. What you see is what you get. 
There's no details around the fabric. We can't really tell what this is made of unless we read about the material, which isn't even really listed here to my knowledge, or it's really hard to find. You have to go all the way down here. And then we don't even know what the sizing or fit looks like on different models. You know, we can't really tell what the color is unless we really zoom in here. Even then we start to notice there's a logo on the product. So there's not a lot of visuals on this website. So they could definitely benefit from having more. Whereas we go to a website that's, you know, doing much higher sales volume. For instance, this brand here, who's in the 50 to 100K monthly range. And as we can see, they have four images. And so they're showing the product. They're showing it on different skin tones. They have visualizations here. So there's a little bit more information around the product. And then as we even go up to some of the bigger brands, they have even more images highlighting the product, showing the different styles, how it's being worn, what it looks like, the fabric, the details around it. So it's very important that you have additional images explaining your product and showing exactly how it's worn, what it looks like, the features and benefits, calling out all of the information around why somebody should buy your product and what it's going to do for them. The next thing we looked at was the average number of installs of apps versus monthly sales. And what we see here is an interesting trend. As brands tend to add more apps to their websites, we actually see the revenue go up. This makes sense because they're probably adding upsells, which is increasing their revenue. They're adding bundling apps. They're adding you know, additional themes or leveraging an app for subscriptions now. And they have multiple apps. And then what you find in the one to $5 million plus range is you actually see the number of apps go down. And likely what explains some of this data is these bigger brands are investing more in their team and coding and simplifying their site structure. So they're actually removing apps that aren't necessary or what they're doing is they're investing in their own tools, meaning rather than paying an app to have upsells on their cart where it costs them a percentage of every product sold, to be sent to that app that they're using for upsells. They're having their own team install code on their own cart to be able to immediately offer that upsell so that way they no longer have to pay these other companies through their app. So they're investing more in their teams to be able to design their own features so that way they don't have to leverage other apps and they're simplifying their overall site to make it convert much better. So that definitely doesn't mean that you don't need you know, more apps. You need to invest in the tools that are going to get you more sales like upsell apps, like bundle apps. We know these things to be true to increase revenue. So you need to find all of the tools that are going to help you leverage this. And I've actually listed a few of these below this video. And some of the key points here are, as businesses scale, they increasingly invest in more sophisticated email and SMS marketing platforms like Klaviyo to manage personalized communication with a larger customer base. What we found with these smaller brands, they tend to use tools like MailChimp. It's a simple email marketing tool. It's not very expensive, which makes sense. And then as their email list grows and they need more robust and more complicated tools to be able to reach their audience. They invest in tools like Klaviyo, which is a much higher priced app, but they're able to do more unique designs, do a little bit more segmentation, understand their audiences better, and even leverage SMS on top of that. And then number two is attentive. They're using a more advanced SMS marketing tool because that becomes very critical and a very big investment for these brands that are above the 100K mark. What we found was pretty astonishing, almost all of the brands under 100K per month weren't really leveraging SMS very much or if at all. And the brands over 100K month were heavily investing into SMS marketing. And this makes sense because you can reach people via text very quickly. They usually have their notifications turned on. Everybody has their phone in their pocket. People tend to look at emails less and SMS is a direct way to reach out to your customers to get them to come back to your website to buy. So one of the things that is very important here is you definitely wanna be investing in SMS if you wanna scale sales. And then number three, the focus on leveraging customer generated content and reviews via Yotpo or Luke's is extremely common for stores doing 100K plus monthly. And the reason for this is because they're trying to highlight the importance of social proof. They're showing the content they're posting on social media. They're calling out their customers who are reviewing the products and saying, hey, here's what our customers are saying. They're showing the customers wearing the products. They're leveraging a lot more user generated content which definitely helps increase sales. And then number four is businesses over 100K start implementing dedicated customer support platforms like Gorgeous. This makes sense because most brands that are much larger tend to have a lot more support inquiries. But what we found was pretty much no brands were really using any support under 100K a month. And the reason for that is likely because they don't have a lot of support questions, but it begs the question, well, if you do have a way for people to reach out to you via support, is it gonna result in more sales? And the short answer is yes, it will. And that's because people have an easier way to communicate with you and get quicker response times. 
if they have a question spur of the moment while looking at your product and the AI tool responds to them, they're more likely to feel more comfortable in buying. So you definitely want to test having a tool like Gorgeous in your arsenal. Number five is geolocation tools are increasingly utilized as businesses scale. This is because they're going after more markets. They've already started dominating in one country and they're expanding outside of that to increase their overall sales volume. Every country has its peak or every market has its peak in terms of how much you can grow. And to be able to grow further in that actual size, you have to come up with more unique strategies. And one of the more simple ways of doing that is actually just expanding into other countries, offering your products more worldwidely to be able to scale up. So that is definitely something to consider and is a strategy being used with Facebook and TikTok ads. And then what we found was the average technology count was increasing pretty consistently as sales are going up. And what accounts for technology are tools like Apple Pay, Google Pay, Klarna, Afterpay, you know, different data analytic tools like Hotjar, being able to track customer behavior, the Facebook pixel, the TikTok pixel. As brands expand to different platforms, they tend to have more pixels to track data. They're analyzing more information, which gives them more insights to make better decisions and be able to scale. The more they know about their customer, the quicker they can execute and offer them what they want. So as they add additional technologies and find out more about their audience, they're able to make more informed decisions to grow. So some of these key aspects are, well, as they scale, they tend to use tools like personalized engines, where they're actually recommending AI and having products being shown that are more relevant than others to specific customers. This results in a higher conversion rate, leading to more sales. The other one is chatbots and virtual assistants, where they're actually having AI respond to customer-related questions and being able to have conversations with people and offer the discounts in the moment. And then the next one is omni-channel. That means they're leveraging platforms like Meta Commerce and TikTok Shop. We know these two platforms increase sales because it's an additional sales channel on top of Shopify. So if you're not having your product listed there, you should definitely consider it because it opens up more avenues of revenue to come into your door. And then payment options, the number of available options to pay. We know having more payment options will result in more revenue because you have more ways for people to make a decision to buy with a card that they have available. If you offer Google Pay and they have money in their Google Pay account, they're more often going to purchase. Whereas if you don't, they might not have a payment option that really fits them for what they want to buy. Offering a tool like Afterpay, where they can split up the payment into multiple payments, makes it easier for somebody to make a purchase. So tools like this are increasingly common as businesses grow, so you definitely want to be leveraging them. Number two is higher sales ranges often see a greater adoption of subscription-based models, allowing for recurring revenue and stronger customer loyalty through membership benefits. This is super important because as businesses grow, leveraging tools like subscriptions are allowing you to stack your revenue month over month, thus leading to more lifetime revenue, making your ROAS much stronger and more profitable having loyalty where you're actually bringing customers back, offering them special discounts and keeping that base you have constantly repurchasing from you. This allows you to overall scale up your sales because you have those same customers returning and buying more. And we see this much more common throughout the bigger brands. And number three is as stores progress into higher sales brackets, there is a marked increase in the adoption of AI. So they're leveraging AI a lot more frequently than the smaller stores and they're using machine learning technologies to go through that. So after reviewing some of these data points, let's actually compare some of these websites. Some of the additional findings that we went through were a lot of it was related to brand, their product positioning, how they structure their website, how they actually offer their product and demonstrate it. And as we can see here, the smaller brand doesn't have very many images. The information isn't really below their add to cart button. It says you need an item in your cart. They have a lot of options here, not very intuitive for a smaller brand. Then the 50 to 100K brand has the color swatches, you click on them, they show if they're sold out or not. They have the shop pay, they have multiple imagery. As we go up even more, we have additional product images highlighting the product. If we look at their home page, it's much more branded. They're using more visuals to actually showcase their product and putting in a lifestyle setting and showing the product on a background where they actually did a photo shoot and highlighting the actual design. And then as we get into the 500K plus monthly range, they've even moved their add to cart up more. They have icons. They have all of the breakdowns in their descriptions. We know having more information about your product results in more sales. They offer upsells. They've simplified it. They They've even reduced their padding so everything shows up sooner. They've shown extended sizes. If we go to their home page, they know to show their five-star review products. They have videos going through the products that you can actually purchase from watching these. I actually linked the tool below this video to implement this as well. It's not just images. 
they have a lot more content being shown here. And then they have their different categories, their missions, and a little bit more information about their product, how they got it, why it's breathable, soft and stretchy, really honing in on all of the details about what they offer. And we know with bigger brands, this works well. And then if we go to the $5 million plus monthly range, we have Stanley here who has tons of different products that fit so many different markets. They have lots of variations of the products, so many different colors, so many different product types that appeal to so many different people. Everybody can find a product that they want. They're doing big promotions for Halloween, Christmas, holiday themed products. They're investing heavily in doing custom designs so that way people can constantly come back and say, hey, I want this limited edition item. I want this color. I want this type of product. I love this you know, specific item I bought and now I want to try out this one. So we know that this works even with the lower average priced product, they're still buying a ton of products and coming back to their website. And so you really want to focus on all of these aspects that we just analyzed today to really scale up your revenue. And if you're looking for you know, some one-on-one -on -one guidance where we can actually show you how to do this in a custom setting where we're going through and hands-on working with you and setting this up step-by-step so that way you can go from 50 to 100 to 300, even 500K plus months, then I highly recommend booking a call with myself and team to apply for our one-on-one -on -one Ads Mastery Mentorship. And once again, it's your favorite digital marketer here, Chase Chapel. Cheers and bye all.